Oh, welcome back to the Thursday Night Football Preview. Week 8, we've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers traveling to Buffalo to take on Bills Mafia up there in northern New York. Bills are 8.5 point favorites. We've got a 42.5 point over under. We're going to go through everything that you need for this game, previewing it down to a science. We got weather, we got key injuries, we got storylines, we got our favorite underdog squares, and who we think is going to win the game. Who's covering the spread? All that good shit. Weather, not a concern, despite being in Buffalo. It's not that time yet. It's not November, December. Maybe we'll run into some problems, but 60 and clear. For the injuries, I mean, we just got some news that a bunch of the guys on the Bucks are kind of like on the injury report. It's like Baker questionable, Godwin questionable, but those don't really seem like there's any legitimacy to them at no, this I point, unless you've Godwin's, seen otherwise. W- Godwin was ruled in, so he's good to go. Baker feels like he should be in. But I guess it's still up in the air. I think the biggest one for the Bucks is Vita Vea because he's still questionable. He's questionable. Yeah, he hasn't missed any time though. No. Yeah, I I don't know. From what I've seen, there's nothing that's actually uh, concerning. I don't think the vibes aren't too bad over there. Bucks reporters just be yapping about shit for real. The Bills <laughs> report have. though, they, they've they've got some stuff. They're I mean they're already missing most of their defense. Matt Milano, Trey White, Daquan Jones, Ed Oliver missed last week's game which means between him and Daquan Jones, both of their D tackles were out. And I think that's a, a lot of the reason why we saw the Patriots attack them with Zeke and Ramondre kind of like over and over and over again, had some rushing success. Their, their PFF run D just as a team plummeted last week. Um, so the defense is definitely, they've just been kind of a different team on defense since all the injuries happened. Now I think they could, they could possibly like kind of turn out into like a shootout team where their, where their defense was like a strong suit for a while. They're the Rams. The Rams were way worse. Way worse. They wish they had Puka. Want to be Puka. Yeah. Um, and then Dawson Knox is out with wrist surgery, which brings us to kind of the storylines for the game. You know, we are a, a fantasy brand for the most part, so we're excited about Dalton Kincaid, right? He's coming off big game, 8 for 75. Now it's like, can he step up and be the guy that I loved prior to the season? You were huge on him coming out you of Utah. doubling down? I still love him, yeah. I, I think he's – I think he's – an incredible athlete and he's going to be so good at tight end. Now he's being forced into the position. So I'm hoping um, he doesn't have a lot of experience. So I'm wondering, you know, a lot of times like tight ends take a while to develop some quicker than others, but I feel like when you're coming out of college and you don't have experience, um, you don't have vast experience coming out of college or not at like a very high level might take more, more time to acclimate. Maybe that's what we're seeing with Kincaid. Either way, they don't have another, like, fucking Quentin Morris or something. I think he's banged up, too. So he might be, like, the only active tight end on the roster. So it's now or never. If he doesn't produce this week, career is shot, in my opinion. All or nothing. I mean, I see him performing this game, though. It just feels – it almost feels like everybody's expecting a breakout game from Do- or from Dalton Kincaid if last week wasn't already kind of his breakout game. But I don't I know. I feel what- like it can't be a breakout game if, like – he went 8 for 75, so the targets were good, but – I think you got to average more than 10 yards per reception. You know, you can't be like eight receptions, but in the 70 yardage range. I need like six for 122 or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I need big plays. I think that's possible. I think it's possible. That, that feels like Travis Kelsey, George Kittle. Well, that That's what I would qualify as like a breakout game. You know, otherwise you just had like a good game. But I mean, compared to what we've been seeing, like, yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's now or never. He sniffs the 70 mark again. I think it's like, all right, he did what he needed. I want five for 70. It would make me feel better. I would rather have less receptions in the same amount of yards. It would make me feel better about Kincaid, more efficient. Okay. Even though he'd have less fantasy points. That's fine. Excite you. Mm, Buffalo coming off a, a gross loss to New England. New England was like left for dead. Everyone's like, they're the worst team in the NFL by far. They now have Caleb Williams. The dynasty restarts again. And then they beat Buffalo last week. Why, Tony? I don't know, but it, it, this loss is definitely concerning for Buffalo for me. I mean, they went to London, they lost to the Jags, and it's like, okay, you were traveling, Jags were already there, maybe that was a disadvantage for you. Then they come back, and they almost lose to the Giants, who were another team that were kind of left for dead, and it's like, okay, well, you were coming back from London, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe Tyrod's better than Daniel Jones, who really knows? And then you lose to the Patriots. So it feels like for two or three weeks now, we've been like, this is the bounce back spot for Buffalo, and the bounce back spot is just building upon itself with these losses and bad wins. So, are the Buffalo Bills just not as good as we thought coming into the season? They or might be the. This, they might be just yeah. This is a must win. Like they can't drop this. What's their record? Four and three. Yeah. Yeah. But they dropped this. Like the Jets this week play the Giants. Like you can't be third in the division. Yeah. And, and there's so much more time. There is so like, much more. T- it's not so much being four and four, but it's how you got to four and four, yeah. losing to the teams that you did. 
and also not looking great to the teams that you did beat. Yeah, that's the concerning part is like their inconsistency, very like schizophrenic. I'm not, yeah. I'm not too worried about like they'll they can catch up to the Jets. They'll make like the playoffs with I'm like not a, a quick, yeah, that. probably. You would hope. I mean, they lose to the Bucks, but like, if they lose to the Bucks the next week, they have Cincinnati. It's like, yeah, right. I mean, they're eight and a half point favorites, so I don't think anyone expects them to lose to the Bucks. So I guess if we're playing out a storyline, you're not picking Tampa. I guess it, I I, t- I took them on the spread. Spread skis eight and a half, but. If we're looking at Tampa Bay, it's like, how does Tampa Bay win this game? Um, their rush defense is still really, really good, which has been like half a fucking decade now at least. They have the second best rush defense EPA. If you look at the teams around them, Jets, Dallas, Cleveland, New Orleans, Atlanta, absolutely elite run stuffing, pass rushing. Every one of those teams is elite quarterbacks. They've allowed the six most passing yards per game, though. Tenth fewest rushing yards. So they are a pass funnel type D. I think for a while we've kind of just looked at like Tampa Bay, like, oh, they just have a great defense overall, but their pass defense is not the same as their run defense. Two two different defenses we've got playing on there. So it's like, I don't know, Buffalo big, doesn't big really K day. The, bu- <laughs> Buffalo doesn't really win via the ground anyways. So maybe maybe but they never have. That's what I mean. Okay. You know, so it's like they don't I I don't know if like Tampa being great on the ground is really gonna be the reason that Buffalo doesn't succeed. I, I think this is just going to be a day where Diggs, like, might be the wide receiver one on Thursday Night Football, and then Bills establishing themselves, like... What about Josh Allen? You think he'll run a lot? Cause he's, he's, like, not run that much this year. I feel like if they can stuff the running backs, maybe he starts to try to put it on his shoulders. I mean, isn't he, like... I might be ripping this off the top. Like, I could be incorrect. Isn't he still first in total yards amongst QBs? Well, that's passing Just, and like, passing and rushing? And rushing? Yeah. Maybe. Like, that's still doing enough, then. Like, because he's not first in passing yards, like... Yeah, I mean, I I I just think like his rush attempts are they're definitely down. They're, they're down. I think they're like normal. half of of what he would normally be. Is up, he more up efficient to this point. though? Because he feels like he's on pace for his Funny. normal things. His normal like I think he hit like seven hundred the past two years. Just, no, um, he has one hundred and forty eight yards right now. Okay, yeah, no. Yeah, like the attempts are down. He's averaging four attempts, four rushing attempts a game, pretty much right now. Four touchdowns though. Yeah, he's nice. getting into the end zone, but four attempts per game. When you look at like last year's game logs though. Well, I, think it was, I think it was first in total touchdowns. I was thinking of not yards. That would make some sense with four rushing touchdowns on the docket. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's got 15 passing and four, 19. Yeah. That sounds about right. But regardless, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, he's not he's not running the ball as much, which I think it kind of just more attributes to the fact that, like, James Cook is efficient and they feel good about giving him carries and Latavius Murray carries and things. Well, that I think so many concerns around James Cook this year is like, oh, Josh Allen runs the ball. He doesn't dump it off. But actually, he actually is now. Yeah. Like, They've just kind of switched the way that they're moving yeah. the short game a little bit, but I think. maybe it could reverse because they're losing. So it's like, yeah, yeah, that shit ain't working. That's what I mean. I feel like Josh Allen's a dude who plays kind of emotionally, and he's like a little erratic, so he might just be like, this shit's not working. Like, I'm going to just start running like a fucking madman yeah. again. I'm taking over. I mean, it feels like at this point, the Bills' success completely relies on Josh Allen. Yeah, 100%. Their defense ain't there. They really don't have that many weapons outside of Stephon Diggs. So nah. At this point, there's not like a ton of teams that – if if all teams lost their quarterback, which team overall would have like the biggest dip in overall performance? I think the Bills would probably be up there. Chargers for sure. pretty high. Um who's the Chargers backup? Uh, they cut Duggan and Daniel retired, so I have no idea. Easton I mean they Stick. can't they can't Keenan? take a dip. They're already like dropping games. Yeah. Like it's not like they're winning That's right now. I mean. Yeah. They, but I feel like you could say that about anyone though. Uh, the Falcons might get better. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to see Sam Darnold cook this week. Nah. I, I mean, like, you, I, it just goes to the point, like, Allen takes so much of the work there, and he has so many of the touchdowns. Like, Buffalo would be a terrible team if they don't have him doing everything for him. He's definitely the hero. Like, he's the only reason they have a shot. But, like, if you took Mahomes away from the Chiefs, like, they're going to... That's what I'm saying. Like, there are teams that it affects more than others. Not Andy Reid, Not every team feels, is like that. Andy Reid feels like he could piece together something. Maybe. They yeah, they'd be fine. Alex Smith a Look at the bit. Bears. Also, like <laughs> Matt Eberflus is just <laughs> they do better. They just fucking won by t- twenty five points without Justin Fields. Yeah, Chiefs defense is also way better than the Bills if we're comparing them. Yeah, now that they're banged up, that's what I mean. It's all Allen. So you've got Allen at QB three in your fantasy ranks. Yeah, I got him behind Hertz and Mahomes. I kind of wanted to put him behind Lamar, but I'm like QB four. That that's that feels just low on Allen. I mean, it's not going to matter. You're always going to start him, but because his weekly ceiling is just crazy. Yeah. I feel like on any given week, he's like probably most likely to just put up a forty spot. Mm-hmm. But and if we wanted to rock with some due logic, the Bills gotta they're due to <laughs> click a little bit more. Who does uh Who does Baltimore Lamar play? play? Arizona. Oh, okay. yeah, Lamar's going over Allen for sure. If you're in a one quarterback league and somehow have both of them. Like I'm, I'm playing Lamar. <laughs> what a weird combo! To yeah, have. I know, <laughs> but that'd be insane. Yeah, I would probably take Lamar there too. I think. 
Really? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't fucking matter. No one's gonna have a problem with that. You'll be you'll be okay with either one of them. You got Baker at QB twenty two. That was something I wrote in the kind of the game storylines. Is like Baker was like a cool story to start out, and now I think I, I think he's still fine as yeah. your QB, but like Viable. statistically, like even his games in the beginning of the year, people were like oh he's playing so well. He was, he was like one hundred and seventy yards and two touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Like he was never playing that well statistically. He just like wasn't a making Mike Evans line. Yeah, QB. <laughs> it was like Mike Evans was eighty percent of whatever whatever yeah. Mike, Mike Evans did. Just put twenty percent extra. And that's Baker's line. Uh, QB twenty two. So yeah, you're not. I mean, you're not looking to stream him necessarily. I do think this could be a little bit more of like a shootout though, where Baker kind of backs his way into like I don't know dec- a decent stat day. Yeah, for sure. Bills have like really limited opposing quarterback stat lines though. They haven't like faced great guys. Like they've you know they played Zach Wilson and Sam Howell. Um, but up, I mean, I guess recently that's that I mean, has like, they're a different the defense. Yeah, though, that's you know? that's fair. Like, like Tyrod and Matt Jones were just carving up. up but, him, yeah, that's yeah, why like, Baker, Baker's like in that tier. Where you don't you won't depend on it, but a couple guys in a row just did it, so like maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's tough yeah. To Bills say. are probably their defense is actually probably shot right now. So I don't know though because it, Tua didn't cook on them. Like T Law didn't have a crazy stat day on them. T Law, yeah, he did. T Law threw for over three hundred on Buff. Yeah, but T Law's never had like a twenty point game this year. Yeah, but again, that was with all those defensive players that were healthy. The last two games have been the two games without. Tre'Davious White didn't play against the Jags. No, I think he got hurt in that game. Right. I think th- there was one game. Was that the London game? Yeah. I think the London game was the game that they all got hurt in. Okay. All three of them. I know Milano, Milano, yeah. Milano Trey. <laughs> Remember Mike was in here and he bet on the Milano yeah. over tackles. <laughs> and and Milano had like five tackles. Because Baker's a dude that I'm gonna I'm gonna super flex league and I think I have to decide between like Baker and Sam Howell maybe. And Sam Howell plays Philly. Yeah. And like weekly that. I'd like Howell as an upside play. Didn't I mean they did okay against Philly last time they played, no? Yeah, they, they it did, was a high scoring yeah. game. They did surprisingly well considering that Sam Howell's gonna break the record for most sacked quarterback. Yeah. And you obviously have the Philly defense, which he's gonna is get great. so many times against Philly. Oh my god. He's leaving on crutches and in an ambulance. Which one? <laughs> on crutches inside <laughs> an ambulance. Using, He'll be standing using, Yeah, <laughs> he's using crutches to get to an ambulance. All right, let's move to the running backs. We have You think I should be higher on James Cook? Got him on R B nineteen. RB19, uh, no, not really. This could be – I, I could see this being a day where he struggles just because Tampa's yeah. nice on the ground. And he, it's not like he has big ceiling games through the air. You know, if he was someone who was actually catching, like, five passes a game or something like that and they were big explosive plays. Rashad White, I kind of like this week. I mean, you're probably going to throw him in a lot of RB2 spot, spots regardless. But I think this is a game where they could be trailing and he gets – his receiving role is upped a little bit and that's where he's going to succeed. I'm playing into the game script a little, but I, I don't think it's crazy to assume that. Yeah, it looks weird having them so close, but I do think just, like, based on matchups. I could see this being, like, a little bit of a flop day for James Cook based on the matchup, but Rashad White's getting a ton of volume. Yeah, he's still – there's still no competition, even if he's as inefficient as could be. I think he is. It, I don't feel good about him at 22 for some reason. I feel like he's just going to have, like, fucking 40 scoreless yards again. Yeah, it's not a sexy play at all. No, it feels bad. You don't think he gets any receiving work? No, I think he will. I feel like he's, I don't know, I feel like he's going to have like 30 rushing yards and 20 receiving yards. I mean, he doesn't like make, he's not making big plays in the receiving game. So even if he catches like four balls, I feel like they equate to like 20 yards, 25 yards top. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I, I still think he's a fine RB2 play. I mean, behind him. No teams on by. I mean, behind him I got Gus Edwards, Ramondre, Deontay Foreman, uh, Madison. But it's like, is Cam Akers now taking over? It's like, I don't know. I think I might take the three guys that you had behind him. Really? Yeah, Gus against Arizona. You got to think they have some goal line opportunities there for him. Um, who's the other one? Ramondre. Uh, Ramondre. Ramondre's coming off back to back good games. Who do they play? Miami. I mean, that's another pretty good matchup for pass catching back. I think Foreman. I'm very low on compared to the experts. Technically, why? I just think Roshan's going to eat. He was into telling it. me to trade away Foreman in my league. I told TikTok to trade away Foreman. Like Roshan, he's not going to be the one coming back though. Foreman's probably going to get most of the work there. Yeah, but what are you expecting at Foreman? He's probably not going to, like... Like Zach Moss. Oh, my God. He's going to turn to his Foreman Zach Moss Nine, show. 19, touch, 19 touches last week? I feel like... Uh, I think that was just a perfect game for him. They're leading the whole time nah, versus the Raiders. Oh, like, yeah, of course. Who do the Bears play this week? The GOAT. Chargers. Dude, Sunday night football against the Chargers. You, you think Foreman's not going to show out? No, I think the game will be closer than it should, but they're not going to be leading the whole time by any means. Who would you play, Tony? Foreman or Rashad White? I think I got to go Foreman just for the ceiling. Because White, White doesn't feel like he has that. Yeah. The floor play is definitely White, but yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, maybe. Four, it feels like Foreman's got a better chance of scoring a touchdown, too. Oh, yeah. Or two. Or three or, or four. Four, seven. But also, like, with the Bills' defensive line, like you said, being hurt. That's fair. Regardless, like, they're all within a pretty similar tier. 
you could definitely pick and choose, but I think they're all definitely worth a flex play at minimum, and you could argue who you want as your RB2. All right, let's move over to the wide receivers. You got Diggs as an auto start, Evans as an auto start, and then you get into Godwin, wide receiver 27. So, again, no bye weeks, no bye teams right now. He's a guy that you want to – that you're going to have to decide whether or not you want to start him. Davis at wide receiver 40. It's weird because, like, the the gap between them feels really, really large, but realistically they don't feel that far no. apart in my head. It's just Gabe is like, you know what you're getting. You're flipping a coin. That's that's going to be a personal I feel like preference. Godwin, you know what you're getting. Gabe, you have no idea what Gabe, you're getting. Gabe, you know what you're getting in the sense of you don't know what you're yeah. getting. True. You know that you don't <laughs> you know, know what you're getting. You know you're getting, getting into a mess. Yeah. yeah. I kind of like Gabe this week. Okay, I think it's going to be a sneaky good game for Gabe, flipping a coin. But Godwin's the same... Got to rather, <sighs> in front of Gabe, I have Josh Downs. Downs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Downs, London, Pickens still, Addison. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. See, I think I might play all those guys over Godwin, too. Really? Dude, like, what is... I mean, God, the, I might be looking to it too much, but he is coming off, like, a 12-target game. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. He's, like, out-targeted Evans in the past two games combined. But but the thing with God, I feel like Godwin's targets almost mean nothing. He's, like... He's he, not cooking He with turns him. 12 targets into 60 yards. That's, like, what he does all the time. He had the one game of 114. Yeah, the last three games he's been kind of hot. Eight for 114, 677, 666. Yeah. No, not bad at all, for sure. It's a little bit of a higher floor. But it wouldn't surprise me if he just kind of reverts back to those first three games where it was so, 550, 550, 330. I was looking at the Bills' points given up to, like, wide receivers that play on the outside versus in the slot. Okay. And they're tense. And this could be... Not super accurate because it took into the whole season. Now that Trey White's out, I don't really know how that'll affect it. Probably a lot. But they give up a lot more points to slot wide receivers. Okay. And Godwin hasn't been playing the slot like he used to, but still, it's something. Yeah. I wonder if that had to do with like Trey White at all taking the one, even though I don't think he was like fully back. I would. So you have Addison. You would take. You would play Godwin over Addison. I feel like Addison's kind of a, a must start wide receiver too. Yeah, I guess I am pretty low on him if you look at it compared to the excerpts. But it's just like, did he hit a ceiling last week? Now he's got to go face Jair Alexander. I feel like it's a good matchup. I kind of feel like the Packers stink. True. Kirk Cousins also balling out with just without Justin Jefferson. Kirk's just good. Yeah, he might just be good. Doesn't really that. matter. I mean, like Godwin, right behind Godwin, I have Lockett, Higgins, Terry. Terry might be a little low. Lockett. The, 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 it might just be Addison sticking out in my head. I think I would play Addison over all those guys. Damn. I yeah. mean, based Addison, on I feel last like game, really good. About. You could start Addison over like majority. Yeah, and I'm not even like necessarily going off last game. I just think. Even prior to last game, I was fine starting him again. Just the opportunity is so ripe, and Kirk's just throwing for a fuckload of yards, you know? That's He's fair. the only one who gets, like, downfield targets in that offense. I, I think I might be letting the Chicago game taint me. Like, yeah, I think so a little bit. What the hell did you do? That I think he's the one there pretty clearly. And Lockett's been, like, kind of underwhelming, too. I yeah, didn't realize until I started looking at the him, lines. Godwin, and Higgins are just all yeah. bunched. That's why I think I'd rather have some of those, like— it's easy to get caught up in the name game there with those mm-hmm. like big dudes, but I almost I almost feel like the fantasy points are going to go towards a, the lesser name. Like guys. I took them out of the like official wide receiver two range, but maybe I I need to even take them a tier below or tier lower. Tight ends, we got Kincaid at tight end eleven. Throw Feels some right. name, throw some names, throw like the three in front of him and three after him, and like matchups too. So I'm all in on this guy now that what we saw Taysom Hill I have in front of him. There we go. Taysom Hill, Pitts, Goddard. Okay. Okay. Is in front. Who do who, the Falcons play? Who? Tennis, Tennessee. Who we play Tennessee? I think uh, I think P- Pitt should definitely move down. I don't know, dude. He's been kind of. It's been a little juicy. He played like shit last week. Florida bias. Also, I think that game, like Tennessee Falcons, is gonna be so slow. Could, yeah. I think there might be seventy five carries between them two. Yeah, and it's just clock, clock, clock. Each team only. One has guy three I had a hard mm-hmm. time deciding between Dalton Kincaid or Dalton Schultz. Kincaid. Schultz is coming off of two pretty good games, but he did score, so it's like... He is. When you said touchdown. Dalton Schultz, I totally thought of fucking Jake Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Schultz, uh, Schultz, yeah, Schultz has been kind of good lately. I do yeah. wonder, though... And if, they are playing Carolina. If any, yeah. That's a good matchup. I, I wonder if any of that has to do with uh, who's been... Tank's been out for them. I yeah, feel like the bo- both games back. with Schultz has been like players have missed time on offense. Maybe. I don't want to take it fully away, but he was like terrible to start this season. I, I, I think I would play Kincaid. Okay. The rankings have Schultz one spot higher, or the expert rankings. I got mm-hmm. Kincaid one spot above him, but again. Who else is right behind Schultz? Janu. Okay. And Fergie, Logan Thomas. What do you think about, well, I don't, we don't got to get into Michael Mayer, but I kind of want to give him some love. Definitely more of a dynasty. Nice dynasty asset. Yeah. I, I, I'd be fine throwing him in if I how, was How high desperate. up would you throw, like, Trey McBride now without Ertz? He's already been out targeting him the past two games. Yeah, he's, he's a guy that... Um, I want to see a game or two of production before I get before like the opportunity yeah. 
yeah. gets into my lineup. But I'm 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 excited if I own him. Like I, I have him in a dynasty league or two, and I finally feel like I could maybe throw him into a lineup in a couple of weeks. I definitely think Kincaid deserves to be right around that tight end one spot now, though. Yeah, for sure. There's no way you can't under dope. All right, well, they've got the free square. As always, if you have not signed up yet, they give this to you laid up on a platter. Use code BDGE when you sign up. Whatever you throw down, they are going to double it. And then you're going to double it again because they're giving you a free square of Josh Allen over .5 yards. He just got to get a single yard, and you are a winner on underdog. Promo code BDGE when you sign up for the first time. And the square I will be taking is on the Buffalo Bills side of the ball. It's Gabe Davis higher than 39 and a half receiving yards. Gabe Davis is more of a coin flip type play as we discussed before. He's had a streak of really good games in the last couple games. He's kind of dudded out. And again, they're playing against what I think is a pass funnel defense. So I think Josh Allen takes the game into his own hands. Uh, Dawson Knox being out good for Kincaid, but I think it's good for all the passing weapons there. You know, you start to shift the targets over a little bit. Tampa Bay, not great on the passing um, defensive side of the things. And since Buffalo's defense kind of stinks as well, I think uh, Tampa Bay might throw up a surprising number of points and hopefully keep Josh Allen throwing the ball throughout the game. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan of Gabe Davis this week. I think he has a, a pretty good game. I feel pretty and a half good feels low. about a Gabe Davis touchdown. Like Me a little too. spicy play. They have spice on it. A little I'm peppy. I'm sure. There's just... I can check. No way it's even. We got Gabe Davis to score a touchdown at 2x. 2x. I like that value. A whole nother chili pepper on top of That's it. That's a big Val. That's a big Val yeah. play. The Dalton Kincaid line is so chalky, but it's it looks so good. Yeah, when I, I mean, when we first started making the show sheet for this show, I have a screenshot on this on the screen. It was at 36 and a half receiving yards for Kincaid. It since then, which was I don't remember if I put it on last night or this morning. It's gone up to what is it at now? 40, 41. 41 and a half. Yeah. 41 and a half. So it went up five yards since then. That's kind of like the five yards makes me want to move off of it a little bit. I felt super good about this. I feel like it's in the right range now, probably at 41 and a half. So I don't feel as comfortable with it. But if you want to take it, um, I was doing a little bit of research. He's obviously coming off the big game. Dawson Knox, uh, tight ends, see 8.3 targets a game against Tampa Bay, which is the fifth highest in the NFL. So I still think it's a good play, but I think we got to take it. Yeah. Tony's pivoting. We're taking I'll, it. I might be pivoting again. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, last last week he had eight targets, eight receptions for only seventy five yards. We were talking about that low A dot. Like, is that is that just the type of player he is, or is that? That's not what? the type of player. He's a downfield playmaker. That's what but I mean. The way they're using him in the offense is terrible. It, it's it's like two two point six A dot every week. But like, even with him being he needs massively misused, fourteen receptions to hit thirty seven yards. But even with him being like, massively misused, like he's still could he could probably 40. get it in like four or five catches if he's just a little more. But efficient. that's not like a given to him though. Getting that it's type not, of volume. No, but not, could it be now? That's, that's why we play the game. That's why we play could, the squares. Could 8, 9, 10 catches be the new norm? He's just like the Alvin Kamara of tight ends. Basically, pretty much. Four yards per catch. All right, Jamo, you got to rip yours because I'm, I'm massively He's, pivoting. I'm pivoting everywhere. I've, I have my plant foot down, and I'm just going in circles. I'm taking Rashad White lower, 48 and a half rushing yards. I feel like we don't take many lowers, so I'll, I'll rep us a little bit. He's only hit this in two out of six games this year, and the two games he did it in is when the Bucks were a favorite team, winning the game by two scores. I will say the line is at 46-and-a-half now. You still feel good with that? I mean, I guess. I, I guess I won't let the two yards influence me, but this is a game where they're the underdogs by two scores. This is not the game script we want for Rashad White. We'll, we'll have to see kind of based on the Ed Oliver health that could be definitely a big influence because when healthy, the Bills allow – Went upside down. What the hell did you change? What do you mean? Was that me? Oh, yeah. I remember what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> the Bills allowed the seventh fewest rushing yards on the season. Fucking me up. You you wrote seventh. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck did you just write? On the to, sheet, he had like, Bills allowed the seventh fewest, least, most. Littlest. Littlest <laughs> rushing yards. So I changed the upside down most. Ups- <laughs> the seventh upside down most rushing yards. So the seven Bills league. got a good run D when they are healthy. So if Ed Oliver plays, I really like this play. If he doesn't, you might want to look at the free square. <laughs> you might just want to pivot. <laughs> pick a different buck. Pick a buck that Tony's going to go with. Kate Otten. Fucking Kate Otten under. Apparently he's at like 27 <laughs> and a half receiving yards. Apparently Not- him and Kelsey are in the rivals <laughs> yeah, together. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But given the game script, that's a, this is why I'm so heavily on the under the Bucks just aren't going to be controlling the pace of the game. They're not going to be leading to where they can run the ball like they want to. And Rashad White just straight up is not that efficient of a runner. All right, guys, I'm I'm spiraling. I'm pivoting so hard. 
I was going with you're James. like a girl before a date. The yeah, amount no. of times you change your outfit. I was thinking James Cook over total yards, but then you were kind of slandering James Cook, being like, or some somebody was slandering James Cook before, and then I even had the Dalton Kincaid over, which still sounds pretty juicy, but it's again just super chalky. I kind of like Baker Mayfield to go over some of his <laughs> overs. I like Josh Allen to go over some of his overs. Too many overs. I know there's too many overs. It's not going to happen. Can I take a Josh Allen even though he's already the free square? No. Uh, no. Pick a buck. Pick a buck. Okay. Or do you have a buck? They gotta chalk that. <laughs> that one's caking. G- giving the Bills upside down defense. Take Chase McLaughlin. No, no, no. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take, take a Baker. A I'm gonna take a Baker. Levante David tackles. Levante David tackles. I can't, is high. I can't tell you a fucking tackle total. <laughs> what, what about this? You got this? it. No, not at all. What if I make my own slip? <laughs> Why, can I? I can't take a Josh Allen one. You could take it in addition to this one you're about to say. I mean, I guess you can because not everyone's a free like a, yeah. a first time depositor. Plus, no one probably takes these anyways. <laughs> what do you mean? Crap! All this we we've been leading people to to the money land. This is we're at two hours and forty one minutes right now. Yeah, we need to wrap this up. Okay, hear me out. Josh Allen. I like his. There's a couple of Josh Allen lines that I like. Attempts and yards. Right. right. So okay, okay. Here here's my thought process on the attempts. Passing? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a run. <laughs> it's a pass funnel defense. Tampa Bay. They're pretty good against the run, but teams also don't really run against the Bucks. I don't know. It's kind of a chicken or an egg thing. It's like, do people not run against the Bucks because they know they can chop them up through the air, or do they not run against the Bucks because the Bucks have a good run defense? Either way, I don't know. But I just think Josh Allen's going to be throwing the ball a lot. Thirty-two and a half attempts is like a very doable line by Josh Allen. He's done that in like four <laughs> of his games. However, he also yucks the ball down the field which doesn't, like, cater to attempts. It caters to yards, you know? Yeah. So it's Stephon Diggs. It. Dude, he yams it down the field. I mean, that'd be a good stack with Gabe Davis. That's why we do Davis, yeah. So we're going yards. We're thinking yards. 264 pass yards. Josh this Allen. is your square. But there's also one and a half passing touchdowns, <laughs> which he's done in his we know what games. We know what yeah. lines they put up there. We just play set the line. You guys don't know any of these lines. I won with an overtime bucket. What do you mean? Okay, final, <laughs> final pivot. Josh Allen. Higher than one and a half passing touchdowns. Touchdowns. That's, that's a, his line. Yeah, even so high. Don't don't do that. Don't <laughs> what's do that. So wait, what's his fantasy points? Is that on there? Oh, fantasy points would be a good one. It's not up there though. Damn, underdog. All right, no final pivot. Josh Allen higher than thirty-two and a half pass attempts. This is a pass funnel defense. Keep it simple. All right. Keep it simple. He throws the ball. Way to keep it simple, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> Way to keep all that simple. <laughs> so sharp. The Bucs, you, you got to throw the ball against the Bucs. You can't run it. Josh Allen has to put the team on his back. He needs to throw the ball. What if they're up by two touchdowns? Gonna they, they're, the he's going to throw dump-offs, little dump-offs. It's okay. He can do it. He can throw it. His yeah, rush, attempts are, day. rush attempts Dude, are I originally had James Cook. James Cook is what I have <laughs> on this fucking Why script. Why did you do that, Jamo? But do you, actually, do you actually think it would be a big James Cook day? Because I kind of feel like it could, too. I kind of oh, meant it as in James like Cook's the always off. okay. Yeah, he's always do. Yeah. So seventeen and a half receiving yards from James Cook. Oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah, dude. go back. Plus, plus <laughs> the Bills Cook. in prior games. David Montgomery has one catch for like nineteen. Tyler Algier has like three for fifty three. Like all these dudes are averaging more than seventeen yards per catch against the Bucks. And James Cook, like does James Cook, just need one catch. How many slips are you making tomorrow? <laughs> so <laughs> many. You're making so I'm, ta- many. I'm taking every higher in the book. And what's funny is. James Cook has I don't a think a lot of points get yards per reception, doesn't he? I think me and Nick just looked at. Yeah, him. he just literally doesn't catch that many balls. Yeah, he has a high yards per reception. He averages like ten yards a catch. You need two. If do they have like a catch line? If that's at like two flat, you slam the nah, over. Okay, they, they wouldn't put Cook at two. They wouldn't put Cook at two. Are we sure? Hundred percent. They probably don't even have a reception line for him. Well, seventeen and a half yards is still there. He's at two, two and a half receptions. Two and a half receptions. Two and a half receptions. Oh, you shit me, brother! Take the over on the yards. He got nothing. On the yards? Yeah, because if, if he gets two catches, he's hitting that. And then you still know a third. Okay, play. scroll scroll down. <coughs> we're going back to my original. After all this pivoting, we're going to my original. So scroll down. Let me let me whip up some facts for you guys, all right? Let me let me cook. I can't believe you had all this written down, and then you just pivoted right off it. Because as I was writing this down, I was like, I still don't feel good about it. It feels like I'm forcing this narrative, but I'm, I'm going to force it to the people anyways, all right? Feels like the Bucks have a high yards per reception against running backs. Khalil Herbert, one catch, twenty three yards. Oh, we're or taking said total D-Mont. yards. That's what I had written pivot down. But away. We, can, we can go to go, we can go pivot back, from the back. original. Back to seventeen Josh receiving Allen. yards. Yeah. <laughs> Turn the car around. <laughs> back to Josh Chase Allen. McLaughlin. <laughs> back to Devontae. Yo, Jason McLaughlin. Only five and a half kicking points. That's what I said before. Yeah. Why don't you take the under on the receptions? He's getting three catches. James Cook. Oh. 
Yeah. He did it in I don't know, he's four games. He's been over three yeah. games. He's been under. It's, it's I don't feel strongly about either of them. Okay, ja- okay, over final yards. final final. James Cook higher than 17 and a half receiving yards. 17 and a half. James Cook might be running some deep routes this game because of how bad the Bucks are. Damn, Kincaid's back to 36. No way. I'm kidding. Oh my god. <laughs> you were about to switch so quick. Hell yeah. You know what? It was always Kincaid. <laughs> what are we doing? Like Dawson Knox is out. Kincaid had a No good one's game. listening to this. But like <laughs> we have to get the two hours and 47 minutes We somehow. pivoted off Dalton Kincaid because we were like, it's too good of a line. Oh, you did. <laughs> they got, you I did. did. They got Chase McLaughlin one and a half field goals as a spicy. <laughs> they really? Yeah. Okay. So do 1. we 1.25? Yeah. Do we add him to the slit? Oh, my God. That's so funny. Okay. I need to make a final decision for the fucking graphic. James Cook, higher. 17 and a half receiving yards. I like it. Yeah. I like it, too, kind of, for the most part. Up James Cook stats. He had 46 receiving yards against New England, 25 against Jacksonville. What else does he have? My only goes back to his games. Uh, 48 versus Miami. He had a zero in between that, though. I know. Why did he have a zero against 17, the Giants? 17, 14. It's just a fluke. This is a bad game against the Giants overall. I think he's good. I think he'll hit it. Okay. He's averaging 27 a game. That's all. That's the one stat you need to rely on. All right. A- Cut everything else and just say that one stat. Cook averages 27. But the reason why I took the higher on the total yards is because the Bucks have the fourth most yards per rush attempt in the league. Like, again, like it goes back to what I'm saying. People don't run the ball against the Bucks, but when they do, they're pretty successful. James Cook's pretty efficient. Interesting, because they have the second lowest EPA. EPA? Expected points allowed? On okay. rush on rushing attempts, yeah. Which is, like, what a lot of people use as, like, the standard for efficiency. I don't mm-hmm. really know if it's that's good or not, to be honest. But I don't, I don't know either. But five yards per rush attempt? That's a lot. Bucks, that's really yeah. shitty, yeah. It's a very confusing box defense. So confusing. It's a so confusing it's makes you square so hard. This square. I don't know what to do. But they're my pick. 17 receiving from James Cook. That's what it is. You need more. 18. 17 and Latavius a half. Latavius Murray's so getting a screenplay for like 40 yards. <clears throat> Hell no. Nah. Game predictions. We finally made it to game Where do we start? <laughs> Bill Sprinkle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to take Tampa plus eight and a half. Same. I'm just not sure what Buffalo is right now. It feels like... We're selling Buffalo short a little bit. I also don't think Tampa's like an atrocity of a team, though. You know, I had I had pretty good, pretty high expectations for Tampa coming in. Like I didn't think that they were out of their division. I thought they'd be like kind of a five hundred team, which is not what like the market thought of them. But as the season has progressed, progressed, I've I feel kind like of that's like, what they are. No, if yeah, you expect but, them to be a five hundred team and they ended up being that, why do you not like them? Because they're still not like playing. I feel like as the season's gone along, they've just, their play has regressed. Maybe, I guess. I feel like that's just in, like when you lose as many games as you win, you're just going to have bad games good games. I don't know. I think I they're just going to end up being like a 8-9, 9-8 team. Yeah. It'll be 500 all year. I just I don't want to sell on the Bills right now. I don't think you're they, I think selling to take the Bucks plus 8. It like. is a lot of points. It's a lot of points for maybe, you know, a respectable team. But, like, are the Bucks respectable or are they just ha- have they been respectable up to they're this point? They're not disrespectable. You know, like that's kind of what I'm getting. They're not, I feel like they haven't had really any like terribly poor games where this is like what I was saying about Washington and you were like, no, Washington's terrible and they got their asses kicked. Tampa doesn't feel like they're a team that they're I, like, like floor Tampa's weeks are better just, than Washington. There's right, a chance that's my Tampa point. could get in the playoffs without winning the division. It's the only way they're going to get in. But also that's a wild card. Yeah, not a wild card. No chance. No, Why not. They are right now. But because they're winning their division. No, oh, they're the seventh are. seed right now. They're not going to stay. That's there. not sustaining over Who? another half of football. Who's going to make it, bro? You got you. Okay, so you got the Philly and Dallas are two, right? That's one wild card spot gone. I think in the North, like I would pick the Vikings. I guess are a three win team, but going forward, they feel like a better team than the Bucs. Definitely Detroit, uh, Atlanta. Seattle, and Niners. Yeah, Atlanta. Yeah. What's the Rams' record? The Rams feel like a better team than the Bucs. They keep losing. Yeah. They keep losing. That's fair. They lost to the Steelers. I guess. I legit think it could be Bucks or Vikings. Like, two, sh- like the Vikings got a sh- cake. Why did we extend playoffs? Like, one undeserving team is for sure making it. Because Tampa's going to upset the two seed. No chance. Chill. This is their chance. 49ers to- get enough upset at, by Tampa? It's enough. <laughs> the Bucs win this game. They win a playoff game. Does that correlate? No. I'll take, I'll take the no Mutually on that. exclusive. I'm taking Tampa plus eight and a half. Future seventh seed. Feels like a 28 20 game. <laughs> Give me the hook. <laughs> it's not 38, Wait, 30. Hook. No, that was close. Uh, Definitely gonna, smashes the over, though. I'm, I'm going to take Tampa, too, because, I mean, 42 and a half total, like, eight points is a lot in that situation. And you, you guys all going over? Does it feel like a low total? It does to me. 
I mean, uh, yeah, it is a low total. 42 is a low total. But, like, unders have been smashing this year. Yeah. Like, maybe this is an over-adjustment, but... What's the, like, how, what's the rate of unders hitting? High. It's high. You, are you just guessing? A lot. No, it's what I've seen. I don't remember the exact number. I feel like you coming with that, like, okay, statement. Okay, you want, not, okay, you it's want It's one number you need to remember. That's not an absurd number. I see a lot of numbers on a daily basis, all right? I don't you don't remember, remember any of them. It's going to be, like... You stop flipping back and forth between underdog squares. You don't have that many numbers to worry about. That's what I mean. Just <laughs> yeah. too much shit to look at. What do you think it is right now? The percentage of unders that have hit? Yeah. I heard it in a podcast. You heard it in my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I said it. They probably fucking hit it like 50 fucking 4% of the time or something. I mean, the Bucks last week like did get three fumbles on Ritter and not put up a lot of points. Yeah. They might be terrible. And it's like, if you... Are we back you on You can't those? really take this away from them, but it's like... Without a random Mike Evans deep ball touchdown, they don't score. Like, if they figure out a way to just stop Mike Evans, this might be a pretty shit team. Are we back? Are we on the Bills? Dude, Bills Tampa? minus 12. Sprinkle. <laughs> what, Tony? Tampa's games are 1-5 and five to the over. Bills. Oh, I thought you were saying the unders in general. You were. I, I did mean the unders. Oh, okay. in general. I couldn't find over, over. I found team specific. Feels like it should be here somewhere. But Tampa games. Tampa's a big under team. So the under is five and one. So they're due. Yeah. The under is five and one. Okay. With the Bills, the under is four and three. Two winning records, huh? Over. All right, take us away. Wait, I didn't make it. You guys are both. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going. Ah, uh, fuck. I'm going. Okay, I, we're just gonna go across the board. Tampa plus the points and over. Have to. Have to. Let's Tampa's just it. gonna win straight up. Let's do it. I mean, they're a playoff team. They should. This I'm serious. They, do you think they can? This is how they make a statement. No. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. I think they can. Okay, so we're we're taking Tampa plus eight and a half and sprinkling on Bills. I think line. the Saints could jump Tampa. But I think that's another team. No, no shot. Yeah, Saints are dead. Saints play the Colts this week. That's the make or break. Can't lose. Colts are if they team. win, they win a playoff game. Auto mm, against Atlanta. They jump to the fifth seed. Beat them in Atlanta. It's never happened before. Atlanta home loss. They've never lost a division game at home. Take us away. <laughs> never, never. It's not my fault. Stop yelling at me. Holy shit! Hold on. Wait, hold on. Take us away. That year, Cam Newton went 15-1. and one. The one team he lost to was Atlanta. Was it in Atlanta? Yeah. You have no idea. We've never lost a division game at home. Cap. Tom Brady went 2-0 and on Atlanta probably the whole time he was there. Your statement was literally, he probably did that. It's just a guess. He had to have. Let me think of that 2020 year. I might be able to name their losses. The Saints twice. How the fuck the do you know the, the Falcons' season? losses in the 2020 season? What is actually <laughs> wrong with you? I was thinking of the Bucks losses. Oh. <laughs> so I would know if they didn't lose. But also that, too. I don't know. Take us away. Oh, found it. Unders. <laughs> <laughs> Unders are hitting at a 61% this year. Really? Yeah. All right, over. They're due. They're so due. You actually believe that's that? I mean, it sounds like bullshit for sure, but it's like. They've I... never lost a home divisional game. You don't realize how long Falcons have been a franchise for? Yeah, of course, the they've lost a home fucking divisional game. The Bucks did beat them twice that year. They probably lost a home divisional game this year. I think they've no. only played Tampa and Atlanta or in Carolina. Desmond Ritter's undefeated at home. That's not I true anymore. That, he lost. Yeah, he lost, yeah, he he lost. First one yeah. to the fucking Commanders, right? Yeah. Remember how? Remember how bad the Commanders are? Remember how we're leading our division? Dude, oh remember? my God! Remember Tom Brady lost to Nick Foles that year. Take us away. <laughs> <laughs> you remember everything about Tom Brady's career in Tampa? Like every detail. Uh, probably a good amount. It's You're probably like the biggest, the best stretch I have though of like a player in a time. Best team. season of your life outside of Herbert moving forward too. I know a lot about that. But that was also the same exact period. I had to finish. All right, that's our Thursday night preview. Tampa across the board. Give us some love. Give give us a sub. Give us the works. Peace.